Hello everybody. This video is going to be for the kit builders. Uh, it should fill in a few holes that um, I probably don't have decent documentation on. So we're going to start uh, by saying that the kit is enclosed in a box like this except there's no cutouts. It's a completely um, empty box, no cutouts. Uh, the kit comes in side, uh, including that uh, capacitor, uh, and when you pull it out, um, if you had an adapter cable, you could run the, uh, the unit immediately, and I'll explain that in this video. There is a uh, PDF on the uh, uh, PEM website, PEMF website, that has a template of the cutouts that I had uh, made on this box. This box is cut out to handle uh, or be, if I finished it up, the uh, complete uh, uh, finished off PEMF product. It's too much work. I have too many projects I'm doing. So that's why I backed up to selling the kits only. So at any rate, that's what the box is all about. We'll get that out of the way. And when you open up the box, you pull out, and everything is connected exactly like this. So if you um, disconnect any of these wires, make sure you make a note of what wires you disconnected so you can put them back uh, if, if you uh, are mounting it in the box. Uh, for example, you'll want to probably disconnect this one with the tape uh, so you can run it through the hole in the box and so forth. Uh, there are pictures on the website showing the, uh, a crude layout inside how this is mounted and so forth. Um, let's go over a couple of things. Already mounted, already mounted is the start-stop switch. And it's a really a good quality switch even though it's tiny. And I drill a hole in the box. In fact, I'll actually get the box again. I drill a hole and I'm pointing to it and that start stop switch comes right through that hole and I glue it and I provided uh, a tube of uh, probably the best all-purpose glue I have ever come across and you'll only use maybe 1 20th of the tube so you'll have a completely uh, usable tube full of um, a very very good all-purpose uh, glue and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about when you actually use it and so when it comes through, I glue a little bit right on the, uh, the rim and right on the ledge here, basically, and stick it through the bottom of the box, and voila, let it dry, and you have a switch that's mounted, and it'll stay mounted until you decide to pick, pick away with the, uh, maybe an exacto knife to get the glue off, and for whatever reason, maybe you want to put it in a different box or something. All right, continuing on, the LED is already wired. This is the LED that blinks um, and lets you know exactly what you dialed in. If you dialed in one hertz per second, it'll blink at one hertz per second. If you dialed um, at a speed, or t and you yeah, if you dialed that at a speed of five hertz per second, it'll blink at five hertz. And then of course there's a setting for random. So let's talk about that. There's two. There's two on um, control knobs. There's six position. One has a red dot on it. That is the speed control. The speed control uh, versus the timing control. So the one without the dot is the timing control. The other one is the speed control. These are all wired up and they work right as they are. Um, you, I built this and I get it this far. Of course, I disconnect the capacitor and I have this resistor disconnected and I have this separated. And I put this in the box and uh, take the knob off and put the shaft through the hole in the box and so forth. There is a template on the PEMF website that defines the speed setting and the time settings. Um, what, you, what you should do is you should print out that template, cut it out so you can paste uh, or tape it to the box so you'll know what these switches and their positions are all about. And um, if you just put this out on a breadboard on a piece of wood and you tack everything down, you can put that little template in a blank space that you can find on your board or your pegboard or whatever. 
Okay, um, one last thing about these is when they're turned all the way counterclockwise, that's position one. Okay, on both of them. All the way counterclockwise, it's already there. That's position one. All right, next thing to tell you is a little bit about the cap. And the cap is um, what I had available or what I, I can come up with now. I used to use a much bigger cap. They were surplus caps that I bought. They were I got a great deal on them. And I think I paid maybe 10, 12 bucks for them, whatever it was. And when I went to replace them, I found out that um, I couldn't buy caps of the quality that I was using for anything less than um, 50 to $125. And they were much bigger caps, they were about that tall. Um, and they um, had a much higher voltage rating. But they were the same microfarad rating of 150 microfarads. Unless you know what you're doing, uh, do not change the microfarad rating. And if you change the voltage rating, it'll be bigger and it will run cooler if you increase the voltage rating, that is. This resistor is part of the circuit and it needs to be cooled. Uh, so put it in the direction of the fan flow uh, or close as you can. And use the standoffs whenever you when you mount it inside your box or wh wherever you mount it because it does get hot. And the fan, the fans in the little bag of tools, the fan should be blowing down, down on top of the heat sinks, and it will cool the heat sinks. It will cool the 230 amp um, the heat sinks and the 230 amp uh, rectifiers. And that nylon um, screw that's in between or separating them is there so these won't bend into one another because their collectors are exposed to one another. And I don't want them ever accidentally touching uh, because it's a kit and you're going to be handling it. And if you actually squeeze them together, fire it up, you're going to blow. You'd blow, but you won't now because that's what the uh, screw is all about. Of course, we know that this is the Arduino that I'm pointing to right here. And the very top of it's got a... Um, mini USB connector uh, to connect to your computer for programming. I don't recommend you try doing any programming unless you know what you're doing. And maybe you'll want to pass me an email first. Uh, there are features that can be improved upon, um, but they haven't been thoroughly tested, so I can't let the unit go out that way without thoroughly testing the features. So um, it's at where it's at. It's a beautiful unit right where it's at. I have two of them running in uh, my household and um, they're at the level of this um, kit, uh, software-wise and hardware-wise. All right. Um, oh, there is a veritable trim resistor. It's all set. You don't have to touch it. Um, but in the schematics, it tells you that it's set to either 8.4 um, K ohms or it's set to 5 volts. Um, but you don't have to set it. It's all, it's all been set. This will run just as it is. Now I have, yeah, here we go. I run, when I test things, and you can see it, the little, the Empire module that I'm pointing to back there, okay. In your kit, you'll find a miniature AC to 12 volt power supply. You will have to connect that up to get this thing to run. Um, it's just plugs. There are already pigtails on the AC power supply, and it's very obvious, you can only plug it one way. There'll be two white wires coming off the uh, AC, this little miniature AC power supply. It's an AC to 12 volt DC power supply. And those white wires get connected to the AC. But when I'm testing, I don't bother with that. <coughs> I, use, I use a vampire module, 12 volts coming out of here, and I made this little adapter cable up. I don't uh, provide it. If you want to do the same thing, um, you, you have to get yourself a nice, 12 volt module, not one that uh, gives you uh, um, 16 volts or whatever. It's got to be 12 volts, and some of those 12 volt modules are really cheap. So you got to watch them. You should measure the voltage. Make sure you've got a a, a good, nice, uh, solid 12 volts, and you can make one of these guys. And this will plug into the board plug that's looking for 12 volts. All right. Um, what else is there to say? Of course, this is the output where you plug your coil in. I happen to have a coil sitting right here with a male AC plug, and I'm going to plug into the female uh, receptacle here off the board. Um, I provided an extension cord in the kit. 
So you can use that extension cord for uh, running it into your box and supplying power. When I do my testing, I made this little extension cord up here. Here it is right here, as you can see. And it's got an inline fuse. I put a fuse in there. Do not power this unit up without having a fuse in, in, in the circuit. Um, if you do something wrong, that fuse will save this board. Um, uh, I know from experience. So uh, the fuse that comes with the kit has a 8 amp slow blow already in it. And I gave you a spare in case you accidentally popped uh, the fuse. And there's ways to do it, but um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's not easy. Uh, well, I won't go into any more than that. All right, so that is a basic introduction. I have one, one, one other thing. On the board, there are two wires. One is a smooth uh, wire, and it's on the same side as the on the same side as the uh, Arduino, and that's your hotline for input AC. And it has nothing on there. It's just got a tin dot. Um, it's been tinned at the very end. And the other one, down by all the black wires that are hanging off, and, and if you look at it, it's going to the ground on this board. That is your common wire for the AC. So here's where your AC plugs in. And I'm going to do a little presentation to prove to you that this uh, this will work ex right, right out of the box. If you either have an adapter like this with a wall module, or you actually go and wire this up. It's actually... Let's actually screw it down on something and plug it in. That's how much wiring there is. All right, so this is uh, part one of the for the kit builders. I'll do a part two and actually run this and connect it, and you'll see how um, your unit will work when you get it. All right.